do you know how amazing it is to have been incarnated on Earth during the age of the internet? Now, I know many of you have mixed feelings about the internet. Oh, the internet's ruining our lives. Oh, as a culture, we're all distracted by our phones and there's too much information, all of this. Okay, I get it. Of course, there's problems with the internet. But overall, I think it is pretty magical that if ever I have a question in my head about literally anything, (laughs) as long as I'm nearby some sort of cellular device or computer with internet connection, I can type that question from my head into the search bar and within seconds, I will have hundreds, if not thousands of answers from articles, scholarly sources, professionals, a couple scammers here or there. We don't really know what's true, but there's definitely a lot of information out there that is available to your fingertips. And of course, that does bring problems, but that's also extremely valuable. Like, when I was 16 years old, I was so lost in my life. I didn't know anything. My school didn't teach me anything. My parents did their best, but overall, I was lost in my life. I was just playing video games and watching porn basically all day. I didn't know what to do with my life. So I went on YouTube and I searched how to be confident, (laughs) how to be attractive. What do I do with my life? And lo and behold, I found excellent (laughs) personal development content on the internet and teachers literally with experience in these fields teaching me about relationships, about business, about happiness, about meditation, about spirituality, about psychology, about philosophy. And I was like, wow, this is great. You're telling me you can just Google the question that you have about life and there's going to be some answers. Maybe they may not be always the right answers, but at least you got something. Now remember, 30 years ago, you had to go to the library to like dig through the books and they might not even have the book that you want and these books are like old and dusty and there's like cobwebs in them and they smell like pee. (laughs) You gotta like blow the dust off them. Like, I don't wanna do that. The internet is an extremely powerful tool. However, I've noticed in the last maybe five years, There is so much information out there, especially personal development information, where everyone is kind of having different opinions about what you should do to improve your life. If you're having trouble in your relationship, for example, (laughs) some dating coach might tell you to never text the girl, only call her. And then another dating coach might say that texting is the most important tool for attracting women and here's the three ways that you can text her to get her to instantly love you (laughs) and come jump on your lap. (laughs) So even in business, some person might say, never do cold calling. (laughs) And then another person might say, this cold calling script will elevate your business beyond your wildest dreams. Or even in spirituality and meditation, someone's saying, oh, if you read the Bible and you pray to God, then you'll be happy and you'll be cleansed of your sins. But then some other person is saying, no, not the Bible. You got to do meditation and you got to study Hinduism and Buddhism. And that's the path to happiness. So all of these voices in the world have always been there, but now they're just kind of all condensed onto one platform which is your YouTube feed or your search feed or whatever you're searching. And the question we have now, the big problem we have is, how do I know which information will work for me? Which information, if I apply it, will actually get me the results that I actually want in my relationship, in my business, in my spirituality? in my happiness. How do I know what's going to work and what's not going to work? There's just so much conflicting opinions. How do I know who to trust and what will work? And it's just, I don't have time to test every single Joe Schmo who appears on my feed with some personal development advice. How do I know it's going to work? So that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video here. I have some very interesting tips that are going to help you with 
getting clear about who you are, how you work. We're going to show you, I'm going to show you three very important resources that you can research on your own. And this is going to help to open the door to find personal development information that is more tailored to you, that feels like it fits, that feels like it's in alignment with who you really are, who you want to be. And you'll find that you have more clarity about which information will work for you and which information won't based on the things that you're going to learn about yourself here in this video. So I just want to make a disclaimer that right now I'm walking through a beautiful forest, one of my favorite forests near my house. And I'm currently on guard a little bit because I'm kind of scared of random strangers walking by and it kind of interrupts my flow state. So <laughs> I get nervous when people walk by when I'm recording. So if that happens, just bear with me, all right? <laughs> but that being said, let's get into what I've been learning about. So over the last eight years, I've been a personal development junkie. I love studying new perspectives, expanding my mind, finding new bits of wisdom from different spiritual traditions and psychologists and scientists and political philosophers and historians and ge geologists. I'm just like, I love studying. I love learning. I love expanding my mind and finding useful bits of information to actually improve my life, improve my productivity, my happiness. <laughs> this tree's improving my happiness right now. That's for sure. It's gorgeous. So throughout this process, I found that one of the most valuable things that helps me to understand myself and who I am as a person is studying very, very deeply the different kinds of personality type models and systems. So for thousands of years, human beings have, we've all had this question of who are we? <laughs> who am I? How am I different from him or her? How, how, what are our different strengths and weaknesses? I think it's really beautiful to acknowledge that we're all different and we have different strengths and different interests and passions and unique abilities and natural talents. So personality type systems, what they're doing is they're basically attempting to map that out into some sort of predictable fashion. Right? And this has been happening for thousands of years. Now, whether you think that's possible or not, that's really up for debate. We're not sure yet if, if it is possible to do that, if it is possible to accurately map all of human psychology in one system. It's probably not possible, actually, because reality is nuanced. It's complex. You can't boil it all down into a single model. But these models still can be very helpful, especially if you look at multiple of them. This is something my teacher really helped me with, my first personal development teacher, Leo Gura on Actualize.org. He helped me with this so much, this idea of studying multiple diverse perspectives. And this allows you to get more of a broad view of the landscape of what's out there, what's possible. If you don't do this, if you only study one system, like for example, you only study Myers-Briggs or you only study Enneagram, the problem is that you'll get stuck and then you get, get kind of trapped in this one view and that view might have limits. It might not be a complete model, but the problem is you wouldn't know its limits unless you stepped outside of it and put yourself into another perspective. So don't only study one system, study multiple systems. And then what will happen is they'll kind of gel, they'll congeal together in your mind and they'll start to mix. And then your insights about yourself, about who you are and your life, you'll be able to tackle it from multiple different angles. You'll be able to see yourself through different lenses to really understand. And really you'll have more juice, more fuel for the fire of your own contemplation. So my teacher helped me a lot with that. So that's what I did. And today I wanted to share with you my three favorite personality type systems 
for helping you to understand who you are and what works for you, what information works for you. This is a big thing. Well, I'm going up a hill. <laughs> this is a big thing that I personally struggle with as a personal development creator is I would love more than anything to come up here and to make a video that works for everyone. <laughs> that would be the best. If I could just record some kind of information and share it with you that applies to every single person, <laughs> regardless of their gender or their personality type or their astrology chart or their energy structure, their body type. <laughs> it just works for everyone. And unfortunately, I can't do that. So as I do a lot of self-reflection about making these videos, I'm very careful. I don't want to share random nonsense. <laughs> and I find that it's difficult for me to record something that I feel will really be valuable for all people. Because I, as I study these systems that I'm going to share with you now, you'll see that all people are very different and they need different advice. If one, if I make a video, for example, that says you should always follow your intuition and your highest excitement, follow your passion and your gut feeling, it'll always work for you. That advice is great for someone like me because of factors that we'll talk about in a second based on my human design. But someone who has a different human design than I do, that advice may not work for them. Maybe they need to they need advice like you should trust your voice trust the the way you see things trust your vision trust your 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 thoughts and like the your your picture of life so see we need different advice for different people so what we're what i'm going to share with you now is how you can find what kind of person you are so that you can find advice that actually works for you all right, so let's begin. I think I'm going to sit down over here. I think I'm wandering too much. Finding a nice leafy spot to sit. All right. Ugh. I love this forest. I did an acid trip here once, and it totally changed my life. It was like the best thing I've ever done. Whew. All right. So, the first personality type system that is very very powerful do not underestimate the power of this system is astrology and not just any astrology specifically I'm talking about what's something called true sky side real astro astrology now let's talk about this for a second first of all you may not even think astrology is a valid way to know your personality type and I just want you to be aware of that if you if you have that thought well astrology that's bullshit that that can't possibly work okay I understand I thought that way as well at one point in my life that's fine all I'm asking you to do is you don't have to believe me <laughs> you don't have to trust anything I'm saying all you have to do is just gently leave a little bit of open space maybe perhaps possibly there could be some valuable information that you can learn about yourself and your energy structure and your life in from astrology in fact i'm telling you that that is the case so leave open that possibility human beings have been studying the stars as a map of the soul for thousands of years this isn't like a new thing that just the new age hippies recently discovered <laughs> this is a, an ancient science that has been going back for many 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 years now the problem with astrology is that it's difficult to like boil it down to like a double blind study in a scientific lab so it's difficult to like get research papers about it however uh, if you're willing to just have a little bit of an open mind and to just kind of use what's out there, you may find that astrology is actually a very beautiful system and you can learn a lot about yourself and about life and even the nature of reality just by studying the system. You don't need to believe it blindly. 
<laughs> you don't need to make it a part of your identity. You don't need to become someone who believes in astrology. You, you can just hold the idea loosely. You can just kind of peek your nose in there, study it for a month or two, test it out, see how it feels for you. See, okay, maybe you don't believe in everything, you don't agree with everything, that's fine, but the mark of a wise person is the ability to hold an idea without immediately accepting or rejecting it. As someone who's interested in self-actualization and personal development, this is what my teacher told me, the most valuable lesson I've ever gotten is that you should be able to hold an idea loosely and to hold multiple conflicting ideas in your mind at the same time in order to get this sort of broad, big picture view of reality, which is very valuable. This is something you really need for yourself in your life in order to know what's going on so you can make good decisions and live well. So astrology, it's awesome. Specifically, true sky side real astrology. So this is going to blow many of your minds. Many of you are already into astrology. So turns out tropical traditional astrology that you've been using. So think about your birth month and what sign you are. Maybe if you're born in March like I am, then you believe that you're a Pisces. That's your sun sign. So it turns out that you're probably not the sign that you think. And this is a big shock for many people. My girlfriend is an excellent researcher into these kinds of topics. She devotes like so much of her life energy just studying, researching deeply with her intuition, studying these topics very, very, very deeply. So she brought to my attention that tropical astrology is not actually in alignment with the actual stars in the sky. Now, you can't see any stars because it's daytime. You can't see up my nose, but <laughs> there's no stars up there. But tropical astrology is not in alignment with the actual constellations in the actual sky. So if an astrologer tells you, oh, the Mars is in Pisces, for example, or Mars is in Aries, the time of this video right now, the, the, everything's in uh, Aries right now. We think it's Aries season because it's April. But no, if you actually download like a night sky app on your phone and actually point it up at the sky and actually look at the constellations, you'll see that the planets themselves, the, the, the sun and all of the important celestial bodies that affect your energy, they're not in Aries. They're actually in Pisces right now at the time of this recording, this video. So that is very profound and very relevant. And the reason why that is, is because 2,000 years ago was when tropical astrology was established and it was in alignment with the seasons. So April was Aries, Mars was Taurus, sorry, May was Taurus, June was Gemini, July was Cancer, August is Leo, etc. But that's not accurate anymore because the, the, plant, the constellations in the sky shift by one degree every year, or it's like an eighth of a degree, or I'm not sure what the actual measurement is, but they shift every year. So after 2,000 years, they're in a completely different place than they were 2,000 years ago. So there's no reason why we would be using the same model from 2,000 years ago. This is something to keep in mind. It's a little dark. Let's go find some sun, guys. So whatever you think your astrology chart is, it's probably wrong. And it's actually time for you to upgrade yourself into a completely new person. Isn't that amazing? You can become a completely new person by just checking out your new astrology chart, which is the true sky astrology what's in alignment with the actual stars. All right, guys, I got to pee, so I'm going to pee right here. I'm very happy right now. So you can find out what you are, what your signs are, by going to the link in the description. I'm not affiliated with this link. It's just the True Sky link. There's also a phenomenal YouTube channel where someone who's an astrologer who uses the True Sky model explains more about it. I'll link that down there as well. 
that will be very helpful for you. So after you get your reading, what you want to do is you just want to read your results. So look at where your sun is, where your moon is, where your Mercury is, your Venus, your Mars, etc. You also want to look at what house it's in as well. The website does a good job of summarizing what all this means so that you don't have to learn astrology from scratch. However, these things are very, very relevant in your life and it's something you want to look more into. Okay, your Mars, just as an example, your what, whatever sign your Mars is in is going to determine how it's best for you to take action in your life. So, for example, if you find that your Mars is in Aries, what that means that you want to take action quickly in a sort of uh, way that follows your impulses. You want to trust your instincts. You want to be quick. And you want to just trust your instincts in the way that you take action. You want to be in your body a lot when you do it. You want to go kind of head first into things. That's going to be good advice for you. Now, this connects to the topic of the video because now imagine you watch a personal development video that says, always think before you do something. Never be impulsive, ever. And maybe that's true for a Virgo. For example, someone, maybe the person who made the video, they have their Mars in Virgo. So for them, they need to be more meticulous and detail oriented when they take action. And their action is going to be more so based in organization and keeping things clean and making sure that nothing is out of place. So imp imp impulsivity for them is unheard of. So if you absorb that video, you see how that's going to confuse you because your actual energies. Uh, the planetary energies are influencing you to be more Aries-like in your action taking, which is the planet of Mars rules your action taking. But then this other YouTube video is telling you something completely different. So see how that would throw you off track. That's exactly what we're trying to talk about in this video is we're trying to add a little bit more nuance and complexity to your whole view of yourself and what it means to be an individual. There's so many factors that you need to consider when taking advice from someone else. All right. So astrology, extremely important. You also want to look at the houses, all of that. It's, it's great. I'll make another video about it. Okay, let's move into the next personality type system that you want to become well versed in and understand so that you can use it to benefit your life. Guys, can I tell you a story quickly? So you see this lettuce here? This is like, it looks like lettuce, right? It's not lettuce. <laughs> I learned this the hard way. One time I was with my friends and I said, hey, look, it's some lettuce. And I picked it, right? I picked, I picked the leaf, put it in my mouth and start, started chewing it. And I was like, oh, I don't know, guys, this tastes terrible. I spit it out, okay? After about 10 minutes, my whole mouth started going tingly and numb. And I actually couldn't feel my mouth for a good 30 minutes afterwards. So this is my public service announcement. If it looks like lettuce, but it's growing in a freaking swamp, it's probably not lettuce, okay? That's the most valuable wisdom I can impart in for you in this entire video. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to the next um, type system, which is human design. So human design is amazing because it combines together tons of different systems that have been developed throughout the ages, across the continents, all over the world. Human design combines together things like I Ching, which is from China, I believe, um, Ayurveda, which is from India, astrology as well, and many other things that I, I'm, I don't know about, but it combines a lot of things together into one comprehensive system called human design. Now, here's the problem again. So I, I've recommended human design in the past, and you may know what your human design is, but it turns out you aren't actually what you think you are because the, the, the tests that you're taking are using the wrong sky. <laughs> they're, they're using the tropical 
old sky from 2,000 years ago <laughs> that for some reason we think it still works, but it doesn't because it's not actually in the actual sky. So we're talking about moving out of concepts into being. What is, what is it actually? <laughs> what is the reality of it? Not what the system says it is or what we, we say it is, what, not with the concept, but what is it actually? The way my girlfriend describes it is like using the actual sky is like moving out of the matrix into actual reality. <laughs> what is actually real? So she found a great website called CosmicHumanDesign.com. I'll link it down there where you can get your human design type. And you just put in your birth time and all that stuff. And they give you a result. That is extremely, extremely accurate. Now, guys, I know you may be a little skeptical. Like, how do I put my birth time into this website? And then I'm going to get some, like, profound personal development information. And I'm going to respond to you. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> but it's phenomenal. And it works excellent. Because I'm open-minded and I'm able to hold an idea loosely without immediately attaching to it. So I tried the advice. I actually took it on for a month or two. And I tried it. And I realized, holy shit, this resonates deeply. This works. It works. It, it, it works for me. So that's good enough. <laughs> so uh, there's other reasons that I'm I'm not smart enough to know why it actually works. Um, but perhaps we'll save that for another video. So cosmic human design means that human design basically there's five main types energy the ways you use your energy. So there's generator, projector, manifesting generator, manifester, and reflector. These five types are based on the energy structures in your body. And they govern how you should go about your day, how you should use your energy, what feelings you should listen to or shouldn't listen to. So for example, very practically, I discovered when I took the normal human design test, I typed as a projector, which is someone who should always wait to be invited before speaking, before giving advice, always wait to give advice. Um, and I just found projectors are known to be very low energy and uh, they're always trying to like, they're very lazy. They need to kind of they're not lazy, they're more so energy efficient because they don't have as much energy as, as other types. They, they need to like do everything in a kind of energy efficient way so they don't waste energy. And this is why projectors are actually excellent at making systems of all kinds more efficient. So if you need to make a system more efficient, ask a projector because they know how to do it. Looks like the bridge is out, guys. So we're just going to... There used to be a bridge here. So we're just going to walk over it, right? No, there's water. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do it anyways. Whatever. Hopefully I don't die. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Walking through these concrete bars. So it turns out I wasn't a projector. When I did the proper test that I link in the description turns out I actually became a generator which is totally different it's a totally different way of using your energy and oh my goodness it is way too muddy here so you got to turn around oh we tried so generators have more of this energy of like they're doing things they always have a lot of energy and they're ready to get things done so and so this completely changed the whole way that I saw myself and the way that I was able to approach my life. And now I feel more authentic. I feel more like I'm in alignment with who I actually am. So that's the benefit of what we're talking about here is you can feel deeply seen and understood. You can deeply understand yourself by learning about these different types. And then you can understand and help other people as well so what you want to do is after you get your answer your your PDF printout for um, your type then you want to look at specifically what's your types are you a projector manifester generator manifesting generator etc 
and then you want to Google that. So go on YouTube and search advice for projectors and then check that out. What does that even mean? And then the other thing you want to look at is specifically your personality profile, which is like you're either a one, three or a two, four or a five, two. It's just these fractions. You want to check that out as well. And there's videos on YouTube that'll tell you what that means. And I think you'll get great insights into yourself, who you are, how you work. And this is like, this will be like the most touching personal development advice you've ever gotten. Okay. That's number two. Number three, the third personality type system that is a little bit harder to use, but is also very powerful is the Myers-Briggs type indicator. So I know we have many thoughts about the Myers-Briggs. Many people think it's all a load of bullshit because they take the test and then they type as one thing, but the test is not accurate or all the web pages are just these like generalizations, these kind of vague platitudes that could apply to anyone. It's like, oh, you have a lot of energy and you like people. But yeah, okay, everyone likes it, has a lot of energy and likes people. Doesn't mean you're a ESFJ just because you like people. So sometimes they're too vague. But anyway, so what I've discovered is that there is actually a way to use the Myers-Briggs type indicator in a, an objective scientific way where you can actually repeatedly type someone for what they actually are. So you can like have two people in a separate room uh, with a barrier between them going through this checklist and they can actually get the exact same type for a certain person based on a long clip of them talking or an interview or or I'm watching their behavior, they can figure that out. So there's a YouTube channel called The Objective Personality. Okay, it's called Objective Personality. There's two people on there named Dave, Dave and Shen. They have this funny podcast and they put clips in there. It's very difficult to learn it from their actual videos because they're a little bit all over the place and uh, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's hard to learn their system. I spent like three weeks just watching every video on their channel and then I got it. But what you want to do basically is go back to the older videos and I'll, I'll make my own video too. So you, you can just wait for that. But you can go back to their older videos and look at, okay, so what are the four cognitive functions or should I say the eight cognitive functions that determine all human behavior? So they talk about extroverted intuition, introverted intuition, extroverted sensing, introverted sensing, extroverted thinking, introverted thinking, extroverted feeling, introverted feeling. Those are the eight. This is um, based in Carl Jung's research and was adapted by uh, two people named Myers and Briggs. <laughs> and uh, these, these two people on objective personality have taken the model much further by actually uh, making it more objective and, and easily replicable and their insights about human psychology are so freaking deep and profound that it'll take you a month just to kind of like process everything and then it'll take you probably many years to really start to understand you'll start to understand people you'll start to see people's cognitive functions literally working in their minds be like oh that's their that's their introverted sensing right there up oh, there oh that's their extroverted intuition etc so what you want to do is you want to just have a basic foundational understanding of the eight cognitive functions okay so n e n i s e s i etc this is so useful for you to learn because then you could start to think to yourself okay what type am I? Now, it is notoriously difficult for you to type yourself. Just because you took the test, it doesn't mean you know what type you are. Just because you resonate with a certain type and you like that type, that doesn't mean you're that type, <laughs> okay? It is very difficult to type yourself. So you just wanna have a little bit of detachment there. I know we're talking about our identity and it's very easy for things to get corrupted and screwed up when we're talking about ourselves and who we are and what we like. So, because we have these images and then the images are never the actual reality. So be loose about it. Just be open-minded, learn about the cognitive functions and then try to figure out what are your primary functions, which are known as your saviors. So 
what are the two functions that you're using the most throughout your life? And then what are the, the two functions that are uh, your demons, they say. So the ones that you react against, your shadow ones. It is difficult for me to give a, a giant summary here in this video. That's not the point of this video. But yeah, Myers-Briggs type indi indicator. I'm going to make a new video about it soon where I'll explain all the stuff in detail so you can just stay tuned for that. Otherwise, hope this video was helpful for you. These are the three main things that you need to know about yourself so that you understand why most personal development information feels like it doesn't really work for you and how to actually find information that actually does work for you based on your personality type <laughs> and who you are as a person. All right, I hope you had fun like I did. I'm coming up to a nice little cliff over here. If you like these vlog videos, then uh, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. Bye.